What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. They have an amazing conference with some of the top Amazon sellers and industry leaders, including Bernie and his team. And our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. Today, I'm very excited. We have Bernie Thompson. He's founder of Efficient Era and Pluggable Technologies. And Pluggable Technologies is a top worldwide brand. We'll talk about the worldwide part for USB, Bluetooth, and charging devices. Efficient Era takes a software developed that helped Pluggable become one of the largest private label electronic sellers on Amazon, took it to the masses so they can use it too. He's worked as a programmer for IBM, a software manager at Microsoft, and much more. And he is author of Flywheels and Feedback Loops, and it's a guide to success for Amazon private label sellers. Bernie, thanks for powering through the cold. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me on, Jeremy. This is awesome. This is a competitive advantage, right? You have this internal software. You're giving it to other people. I mean, you could have yeah. another you know, USB company use your service. Were yep. you ever, and I know Amazon sellers from what I've um, learned, they can be private about what they're doing. Um, yep. So what was the decision to actually, you know, release, okay, yeah, like you can offset the cost, but then you have these competitors or someone else. Maybe that didn't enter in your mind at all. I don't know. Oh, no, no, it totally did. I mean, it, it, it probably delayed us releasing the software for others for probably about two years. Um torturing over this decision because it, it this offers a huge competitive advantage for right. us um and and we knew that we would get some electronic sellers and in fact you know right now we have uh you know over 200 companies you know using efficient era about uh, around 50 using it on a daily basis or regularly um and uh you know, and some of those are electronics companies yeah. or, or have chunks of their product line that overlap our our business um you know, and I'm worried about it both directions. I'm worried about us getting beat with our own tools, and I also worried that, you know, because we sell on Amazon, that that we would not be able to attract electronic sellers. You know, but right I, I, because I, they can look at it like as a privacy thing too. Well, yeah, they're going to have yep. my data. Yep. And How so do you we, get around we, that when you talk to them? Yeah, you know, so there's there's two things about it. I mean, one is that, is that the universe of sellers is really big and the set of categories is really big. So there are just, you know, most sellers are not electronic sellers. And in fact, you know, 95% of sellers or 99% are not electronics. Even though electronics is a really big category, it's a pretty brutal category and you tend to have mostly big sellers there. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing is that, that most of the market is non-competitive. Um, but then, you know, the other thing, so for the set, for the other sellers is we've been very strict about our privacy policy and about how we treat the data. We basically are very careful to say that all all of your data is is yours and is protected and we talk about how it's protected um, and we do carve off one little chunk of data that we want to aggregate the, the learnings from it across all sellers and that has actually keyword data um, so in our in our user agreement we carve off keyword data as one where we're actually going to use all of our keyword data all of us and apply those learnings for all of us um, but everything else, we're, we're very, very strict about it. Um, yeah, you know, and, I can and I see that being a tough decision. Yeah, you know. yeah, it was a tough decision for us. I mean, you know, we, we, uh, you know, it wanted to, you know, I did for probably two years keep it as a competitive advantage just for pluggable. Yeah. Um, and uh, but, it, but in the end, it was that 
Um, things are getting more and more sophisticated on Amazon. Actually, this keyword stuff, we're, we're just rolling out a lot of these keyword features. We, we have a new feature on EfficientArrow.com that's rolling out this coming month where we uh, are pulling in all the Amazon advertising reports and showing you ex on a per SKU basis in a way that Amazon doesn't show you exactly how your advertising spend is leading to sales or not and charting that over time. And uh, so, but, but a lot of this is a lot of software development work to do it. And we really got to the point where to do everything we needed to do to be successful, we couldn't keep it to ourselves anymore. We, we, we needed to make this a standalone tool that, that had a life of its own. And that's what, that's what we've done. What's the most popular portion of Efficient Era? You know, it, it's probably uh, our review to buyer matching. Um, what is that? Yeah, because I see there's buyer review matching, there's email automation, there's seller feedback, VAT invoice automation, sales charts, category ranking, keywords, and a lot more. So yep. the buyer review matching is the most popular. The, the number one reason why people come to us is they've got one or, or a whole bunch of one star or negative reviews. And Amazon does not provide any way to know what order those came from or who that customer is. We actually pull all this data together and connect the dots and figure out which uh, orders go with which, um, with which reviews. And that is what enables you, because if you, if you don't do that, you have no way to contact that customer except with a comment in the review. But a comment in the review is not the right scenario to do customer service. You know, it's out in public. The reviewer actually most of the time will not even receive a notification that you posted up there. It's kind of like, you know, you can give a, you can give a, a kind of a, a response, but you're not going to have an interaction there. Right. The only way to, to really have it be a customer service interaction is to be able to email them directly. Um, and you, if you know uh, what order the thing came from, then Amazon does provide a way for you to contact the customer directly. So Amazon does not connect up reviews and orders, uh, but we, you know, dig through a whole bunch of data uh, and and do that for you. Mm -hmm. So when that negative review gets posted, you get an email that basically says, hey, you got a one star review and here's the link to the order that it came from. And mm -hmm. you can just click on that link and, and go contact that customer and say, sorry, you know, uh, you know, we'd like to help. You know, Bernie, I want to talk about another section of the book, but um, I, I want to ask, you know, we talk a lot about Amazon. What advice do you give people when they're asking you, what should I do about multi-channel or other channels? What what do you tell them? Yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're our size, you got to do it. I mean, and we distribute through the biggest electronics distributor in the country. We sell on Walmart, on eBay, on Newegg. Um, but I tell you what, Amazon's been eating everybody's lunch the last yeah. few years. And so as much as I think everybody, you know, really wants and needs diversification of their revenue streams so that they're not dependent on one company, you know, that that can kind of turn off the spigot at any time, frankly, right. um, and, and does and does, um, you know, but uh, they're winning right now. And, uh, you know, we, we've done all those channels and, you know, uh, we've we've put our full effort into it and uh you know amazon is still hmm. dominant i would think new egg would be big for for that category it's you know it's a lot electronic specialist uh yeah. new egg is you know but if you you know compare with amazon uh you know amazon at this point Just in the, the united states of traffic yeah so much mind share and prime and you know and all that stuff i mean yeah i mean there, i've got a lot of buddies who are geeks like me you know who you know maybe do order off new egg occasionally but you know 10 years ago they ordered off new egg all the time uh and today more and more mm. you know it's off of amazon it's interesting yeah. so in the flywheels and feedback loops um there's also a section on tools so i'm yes. interested in tools software what things do you recommend uh, for people to check out yeah, you know, the, the, the book is really kind of explaining how without playing any games uh, by kind of doing the right thing for customers, you can be successful on Amazon. And, and our tools are centered around that. And so the book, you know, first and foremost, is a kind of a, a full explanation of all the things that would lead you to do things our way. It doesn't actually spend a lot of time talking about our tools, but 
it's the kind of philosophy that leads you to create the kind of tools that we have. Right. So, right. so, so I have to say efficientera.com. That's the, right. the, you know, the most important thing. And we have this kind of broad set of tools. Um, you know, in, in terms of other tools, it's actually interesting. I mean, I think because of who we are, we don't use a ton of other tools. Um, you know, have loved the auto MCF tool. We talked about the other channels there uh, and the ability to, you know, um, you know, serve Newegg and eBay. Well, one of the things that we try to do right from the get-go is um, keep our supply chain simple and also not have to have a warehouse ourselves. Right. Well, the only way really to achieve that would be as if we could fulfill our eBay and Newegg and other orders out of Amazon FBA. Right. Um, and uh, there's been for a long time this great tool, which is part of a, another suite called Auto MCF. It's functionality that we currently don't do at Efficient Era, and uh, you know we use that all the time to you know fulfill our other uh, non Amazon orders. Um, yeah. Any other like um, off Amazon things like email or software that you use internally with the team? You know, um, we send all the emails directly. I, I think uh, a big thing uh, if you're going to be a business like us that's kind of obvious, but some people don't do it, is have a ticketing system. Mm -hmm. uh, we use a ticketing system called Zendesk. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of the bigger ones. It's pretty good. There's a lot of ticketing systems out there. <clears throat> um, but, uh, you know, it's so important uh, in today's world, especially on, on Amazon where reviews are so important, um, that you don't, that you treat every customer interaction as critical, um, that you don't drop them, yeah. um, that you have an ability to have a relatively small team that is able to have kind of waves of customer support requests come in uh, and that you, even though you might not be able to take care of all of them in that one hour, you can take care of all of them in that one day or so. And a ticketing system gives you all those ability, you know, to allocate out the issues and make sure that there's one person assigned to, to to run it to ground and solve it, and also to handle those bubbles throughout the day, uh, and and know uh, you know that you've taken care of everything you know roughly yeah. within the, you know kind of a twenty four hour time frame, which is what we shoot for. Yeah. So, Bernie, I'm going to have you um, talk about whatever advice or story you think is most impactful. But before I have you do that. I want people that you know should check out efficientera.com and they can check out pluggable.com with one G. And um, I want you to tell that you climbed Mount St. Helen in a in a floral dress. So I, I left myself hanging because I don't even know the story. <laughs> and then we'll talk so, about your closing advice. But so, so you know, I, I live here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. I mean, this is an awesome area, great mountains here. And so, you know, one of the things I, I love to do and a lot of people here love to do is hike. Um, so I'm, if, if I'm not here in the office on the weekend or, or with family, chances are I'm up on a mountain somewhere. So there's this great tradition around here uh, that on Mother's Day every year, okay. uh, which is kind of right at the end of the season where it's easy to get permits to climb Mount St. Helens. We get big groups of people to climb Mount St. Helens on Mother's Day. Well, you know, what we do is we all get into dresses in celebrations of our mom, in celebration of our moms. And uh, so, you know, last year I got this beautiful Hawaiian floral dress. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, that's going to uh, be your profile pick of this interview. That you know, oh, is it? No, oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We got it. We got it. If you want, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was fun climbing Mount St. Helens in a dress. Although we had, we had probably uh, forty or sixty mile an hour winds coming down off the mountain in the morning, and the dress was kind of a sail. I mean, I, I was, I was tra climbing along these ridge lines. You can empathize and, now. Yeah, I almost yeah. got swept off the mountain with, with my <laughs> sail and the dress. <laughs> so, what's your final advice? What, what lessons do you want to talk about that would be important for? you know, e-commerce sellers? Yeah, you know, I think the the important thing is it's easier today to start a company and create something unique, create something valuable. Um, and unique doesn't mean it has to be completely unique. It means that you're just doing a few things better and to take that product and reach markets with it and be able to build a viable business with it. You know, whether you are somebody who is just trying to do it just for yourself, you just want financial freedom, you just want time freedom, great. 
or if you're somebody who has this bigger vision of building a, a product company that has a, a brand and a whole line of products and, and takes on the big guys, all of that is much easier today than it, than it ever was in, in, in the past and certainly easier than it was 10 or 20 years ago. And a lot of that has to do with you know, these, these marketplaces, Amazon being in the lead, that let you outsource your sales, your marketing, your logistics and reach a global audience. So, so you know, my advice if you're you know sitting there at a desk job and and um, you're unhappy, um, but you have things in life where you've seen people be frustrated or you've seen people have unmet needs and you know how to solve them with a product, you know this is the time to go do it because uh, uh, you know you you and it's not just on the you know delivery side of the Amazon side, it's also on the supply side of you've got a global supply chain that is willing to work with relatively small companies and produce products for them. And you've got the digital manufacturing revolution that's coming yeah. at us very fast, um, you know, where you can you know, design these products digitally and have them manufactured even as one-offs. Mm -hmm. Company I love to mention, a US company here called Proto Labs. Um, you know, if you're you know, designing a product that is you know, mechanically relatively simple, it's just a few parts, but, mm -hmm. it, but they can be very complex parts. Um, Proto Labs can you know, have them be made for you in, in, in ones or in 1,000 unit mm -hmm. quantities cool. out, out of plastic or metal or a whole bunch of other materials. So, so we're really entering a new world where um, you know, small guys, you know, the small companies, um, uh, anyone, uh, can go start a product company uh, and do things that only the big guys were able to do before. What other shows do you like to go to? So Prosper Show, where else? Yeah, Prosper Show. You know, I actually, you know, it's, I like the oldie show of uh, SCO, uh, the Sellers Conference for Online Entrepreneurs, or in, in a, they're doing a renaming this year. Uh, that's a, another good one. Uh, you know, in my world, electronics, you know, I, I've got to go to Asia a lot for shows, to Hong Kong, uh, and, and then here in the U.S., the Consumer Electronics Show, mm -hmm. uh, National Association of Broadcasters Show. Um, but uh, Some industry ones and specific e-commerce ones, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bernie, thank you. I really appreciate your time. Everyone should check out EfficientEra.com and Pluggable.com. I look forward to seeing you at Prosper Show. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much, Jerry. Thanks, Bernie. Yep, bye. All right, so let's see what – I always like to see what the book looks like. I've seen it, so hold it up for a second. Okay, so here's the book, Flywheels and Feedback Loops, A Guide for Success for Amazon Sellers. Cool. And so it, it's uh, you know it's about 130 pages, but it's we tried to make it fun. It's it's not as you know it's not one of those dry books. At least I hope not. And so you have some equipment uh, around some of your products. I, yeah, actually, so so you know I'm I'm using a pluggable mic right here, which is our uh, USB Vox. It's a great kind of studio microphone. Mm -hmm. And then you know so that you know we don't have any echo effect. I'm actually getting my audio. I'm hearing you in a set of Bluetooth uh, uh, headset oh. here. So, this is our BTHS Flex. Oh, so that so Bluetooth is, the, is around there. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of these collared headsets. It's really, I, I love these What's things. What's your favorite product that you have at Pluggable? Well, you know, our, our top seller are the docking stations. And I love those because you can get multiple monitors, you know, off any PC. Um, it, you know, in addition to, you know, now with USB-C, you can charge your laptop. It's basically a single cable to your laptop and you get all the connectivity you want. But actually, out of the consumer products, it's actually this one that I'm wearing. I mean, mm -hmm. this, this this Bluetooth headset, we, we've been able to do two things that are that are really unique. I mean, first of all, the collared headset, there's not a ton of them out there. This one's a great one. Uh, the other thing is we were able to uh, leap ahead a generation in the chip that's inside here. There's a chip inside here from Cambridge Silicon Radio, CSR. Um, it's the latest generation. It has, a, it has several great new features, including equalization. Um, and the, the price that we were able to get these produced at was awesome. We did a very kind of big batch buy right from the start. This is a product that's unique to us. For a first uh, buy, do you normally, like, okay, we were 1,000 or 10,000 or a set amount that you typically buy for a first run? 
we try to make it as small as possible. I mean, yeah. if we can, we get them down to 500, yeah. uh, but a lot of times it's 1,000. This one was unusual because uh, Bluetooth is uh, regulated, basically regulated by the Bluetooth uh, SIG, the, the Bluetooth standards body. Oh. And so to, to legally and, and kind of comply with their trademark licensing, we have to spend about $4,000 just to get their Bluetooth license for a product wow. like this. And just so for it's, one it's, product. Just for one product. It's very expensive. Oh there's a gosh. lot of, there's a lot of non logoed kind of illegal products on the market. Uh, but, and the Bluetooth SIG is beginning to, you know, take action against some of them. But uh, yeah, because we had to spend $4,000 in just the licensing for this, it actually pushed up what made sense for our initial uh, purchase and manufacturing of it. Um, so we, we tend to do less Bluetooth products, but when we do them, we go all out. We right. Try to customize because there's already it a big possible. cost involved. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. This is, cr I don't even know why you're in this business, Bernie. This is, <laughs> there's so, so many fees off the top of this thing. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. Someone's got to do it, but good for you. <laughs> Electronics is brutal, but we, we've, you know, we're doing brutal. well and we've got great products. Sounds brutal, but thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.